Hi everyone again, this is again Mr. Jerry, now doing a reintroduction to the keyboard classes, both the in-school upper elementary groups and the after-school ones as well. So the things to remember and to work on for your keyboard skills, first and foremost, is simply to learn to identify all the notes. And please don't do one of those things where you get stickers and you put the letters and the notes and things on your keys because that does not help you to actually learn what they look like because you end up looking for those numbers or those letters. So what you want to do is simply remember that, what we've done in class, C is on the left side of the two black keys. D is in the middle of the two black keys. E is on the right side of the two black keys. So in the group of two black keys, you have C, D, and E. Now we move to the section of the three black keys. So on the left side of the three black keys, we have F. And on the left side of the middle of the three, we have G. And on the right side of the middle, we have A. And on the right of all three is B. And after B comes C. So what we have again is the eighth note, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, from where we started. That eighth note is called the octave, and we start all over again with the next C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C notes, which just is the next range, the next octave, the next group of the same notes. So there's really only seven notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then it starts over again. And so in music, it's really, really simple like that. Okay, now, you know, we've gone into the black keys and we're going to look, look at what those are a little bit later. But the idea is what we want to see for now is that there's a pattern of those black keys. You got two black keys and a space and three black keys and a space where there's no black key in between these two pairs of notes in between B and C and between E and F. Those are what we call the half steps in the natural order of notes. Every note to the very next note, like C to the black key to the right, C sharp, is a half step, and then C sharp to the D is a half step, and then D to the D sharp, the black key to the right, is a half step, and then D sharp to the E, that's a half step. But see, the musical alphabet is, you know, well, we could say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and, you know, we've sung before, whoops, my pedal moved away here, we go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, 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 A, B, C, D, So you see, the musical alphabet is even a whole lot easier than the language, the regular alphabet, because there's only seven notes, seven letters to remember, and they just keep repeating. So in music, you want to learn how to say the notes forwards, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and how to say them backwards, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, so that we know that, you know, melodies don't always just go up. Sometimes they go down. Sometimes they go up and down. And all different kinds of ways. So we always want to kind of have in our head what note comes before, what note comes after each note like that. So then once we learn our notes, again, we learn how to look at the keyboard and find each note. So one of the things that we would do in class would be to challenge everyone to like, how quickly can you find all the C's? Like that, you know? And, and just learn to like look at the note that's about that far away from where you just started and also look for the group of two black keys or the three black keys and just be, be able to visualize where all those notes are on the keyboard and learn them by their names you know so after that the next thing that we did of course was take our right hand put our right hand thumb on middle c which is the c on closest to the middle of your keyboard and you put your five fingers 
over those notes. You want to make sure that your hand is kind of curved like this, very, very natural. If you notice that when you drop your hand, your, your fingers are normally curved like that anyway. So you keep a curve over, you don't play the notes flat like that, and you don't really, you know, anyway. So just practice like with your thumb and your pointer and your middle and your ring and your pinky and learn to gain the independence in that finger. Do the same thing with your left hand. Pinky, ring, middle, pointer, thumb. And then when you get, you know, kind of really good with that, you can try both hands together again. And remember now that we want to think in terms of going from the low notes to the high notes, from the left to the right. So we have like C, D, E, F, G, and be able to play them with two hands so that both hands are now coordinated like that. Now, the real next thing that we learn to do is what we want to do with music. Um, now, I'm skipping a whole lot because in our books, then we have all the numbered, you know, songs and things and all the, the two pages of exercises where we're doing... Uh, those exercises like that you know to work on those but the idea is we want to move ahead to actually what makes music all those exercises are designed just to get your fingers strong and independent and when you want to play a certain note that finger and no other finger responds to the note you want to play so we move ahead now to really where the music comes from and that is that when we take our right hand and we put our five fingers over the five notes, one, two, three, four, five, C, D, E, F, G. The first note, which is under our thumb, and the third note, which is under our middle finger, and the fifth note, which is under our pinky, give us the notes C, E, and G. And a chord is the first, third, and fifth notes of wherever we start. So when I'm in C, C, E, G, D, F, A, E, G, B, F, A, C, uh, G, B, D, A, C, E, and B, D, F. And those are the seven chords that make up what we call the key of C major. The notes of C major are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, Do, Re, Mi, Va, Sol, La, Ti, Do. Okay, but the chords are those one, three, five positions starting with each new note. So we want to practice C, B minor, E minor, F, Major G, major A, minor B, diminish and C, and you can go backwards so that we learn to go forwards and backwards with all our chords, because music, you know, always goes in different directions like that. Now, once we do that, there's a whole page of showing now how to play those chords in different progressions and to add our left hand. So, for example, if I'm going to play all seven, including the octave, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the octave, okay, so we did, that was like exercise 1A, yeah, and what we do with that is we play each chord four times. to practice and listen is what we call legato phrasing. Legato is smooth. So each note blends or each new chord blends into the next one and there's just that little you know transition like that. The opposite of legato is called staccato and staccato means that each note is very pointed. that space in between it. That's easy because it's easy to lift our finger, but it's not as easy to hold that chord and move it right at that instant we want to play the next one. So then after we've done all those different exercises, we learn what to do with our left hand. And that was we go to the octave below the middle C and we learn how to play a full octave with our fingers. So over here in the left hand, we go pinky, ring, Middle, pointer, thumb, and when our thumb 
is still on the key, we take our middle finger and bring it over the thumb so that we put the middle finger on the A. We bring our hand around and we finish A, B, and finish with your thumb on C. And to go the opposite direction, we basically do the opposite. So we start with the thumb, and then we go down to the pointer, and down to the middle finger. Now when we're on the middle finger, our thumb comes under and plays the G. And our five fingers come back around, so we have F, and E, and D, and our pinky finishes with a C. So now we can add the left hand with our right hand, and we just want to practice now having the two hands doing different things. The left hand is going to play the note, when what, what we call a whole note. It's going to hold one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's going to hold, and you're going to hold it down for the full four beats. But the right hand is going to play the individual four beats. One, two, three, four, like that. So we're teaching our hands to do independent things. So when we go together, it sounds like... like two with the chord progression in A, and we just practice all those different progressions. So right now you want to again practice A and B. That was progression A. Progression B just goes up to the five chord. One, two, three, four. When you get to five, it goes back down. And believe it or not, that's where those different chord progressions now actually become songs. That was the kind of the, you know, there's like several songs, but the one that comes to mind is a song by Bob Dylan that goes, Once upon a time, the dress so fine, through the bones of die. Whoa, didn't you? And it goes up those chords like that, and it goes back down. Used, used to, anyway. So I, I'm just going to. Have fun with that. But the idea is, you see, once we learn to play the chords and our left hand is going to fill in the bass notes for a while, then all of a sudden we're playing songs. And then one of the other songs that comes up very quickly that also uses those five chords is we just go, Some time in the lines where we all have pain, we all have sorrow. songs and just have progressions that go up and down and we just want to practice the right hand moving up and down with our chords and the left hand playing the bass notes and in the next few lessons we're going to learn about the inversion some of you are there already to where we don't have to keep moving the hand all over but we just have to move one or two fingers to play that next chord and that makes it easier you don't have to look at your fingers all the time so with that, just kind of make sure you're caught up to that much in all your lessons so that you've got your notes down, your five fingers on both hands are being very independent and they can play the notes that you want. And when you want to play notes, you, have, you don't have two fingers going out at the same time with things like that. So keep it up. If you have any special questions or anything that you want to do, again, you can always email all of us through our Keystone email and I will answer those and uh, let me know if you're enjoying this and if there's anything that we particularly want to do. What I'm going to be doing is eventually just kind of going through all the lessons as well again. So until next time, be safe, stay at home, do what you need to do, eat your vegetables and all those things. And uh, Jerry, Mr. Jerry signing off.